Hello guys, I hope you guys are fine. So, uh, welcome to another session here. The purpose, the intent of these sessions is to prepare you guys for the placement drives, especially the coding rounds of various interviews. So, in today's session, we are going to take up a problem belonging to arrays. Now, please remember there are a lot of questions based on arrays which uh, frequently appear in the placement round of various companies right uh, one of the most uh, important topics seems to be arrays so be it any placement drive a question from arrays is going to come up so today in this session we are going to take up a very common problem regarding sub arrays right uh, so without any delay this is the problem i'm given an array and i want to find out the sum of all possible sub arrays now please remember we are talking about sub arrays of this array and here in this question i am going to talk about contiguous elements so 1 2 3 4 or 1 2 3 both are valid sub arrays whereas 1 3 4 is not a valid sub array in this problem so if i have to list down all sub arrays of this particular array they will be 1 2 3 4 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 2 3 2 3 4 and finally 3 4 so i happen to have sub arrays of length 1 i happen to have sub arrays of length 2 1 2 2 3 and 3 4 of length 3 1 2 3 and 2 3 4 and of length 4 please remember i am supposed to have an empty sub array as well but since it is not going to contribute towards uh, the solution i'm not going to consider it right now there are a couple of ways by which i can approach uh, this problem i can try to write down the code of this problem by a few approaches i'm going to in this session focus on one of the brute force approaches i think it's going to be least efficient and most accurate uh, that's the beauty about brute force okay so this is the approach I'm going to generate all possible sub arrays and then find the sum. So the approach is simple. Generate all possible sub arrays of this array and compute its sum. So without uh, any delay, let's uh, head over to our coding portion. I'm going to write down all of the code in a new file. I'm going to name it uh, sum of uh, sub arrays uh, dot uh, cpp. okay got the spellings right now okay so let's uh, start uh, i'm going to include the header file io stream fortunately we will not be needing any other header files here okay let me comment this code to find sum of all sub arrays of an array okay in this uh, code i'm going to take the normal array that we have right one two three four the same array as we had earlier remember this is uh, one of the ways of initializing declaring and initializing an array so if i have written something like this integer a equals one two three four i don't have anything present in these brackets in these uh, square brackets so it automatically takes uh, in as the size of the area is 4 why because i am initializing it with four elements one two three four let's find out the size of this array let's compute the size of this array i can do that by using the size of operator so this is what i can do size of a divided by size of a zero if i am to print n at this moment it is going to give me the value four which is in fact the size of this array Okay, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I would use a variable called total. This total variable has been initialized to zero. This variable is responsible for holding the sum of all the sub arrays of this array. What I would do next is I'm going to go ahead, run a loop and we will come down to why we are running this loop or what this uh, loop actually does in a little while so i have a loop i uh, which ranges from 0 to n i'm going to have another loop which will range from i will go up till less than equal to n 
and I plan to have another loop called k which will range from i till the time it is less than j and I will do a k plus plus here. Total is going to be total plus equals a of k and all I need to do now is to write down total and then change the line. Now we will come down to why we have used these three loops, what is the purpose of each of these loops and how did we know how many loops to use in a little while. But before we go there, let's uh, go ahead and let's run this code. Let's determine that it is giving us the right answer. So here g++ sum of sub arrays dot cpp. I got lucky there. No syntax errors. So let's run it. Okay, I'm getting 50 as the answer. First, let's make sure that this is the right answer that we are getting. If I go back to the place where we have this, these are my sub arrays. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So let's try to sum them up. One plus two gives us three, plus three gives us six, plus four, 10, plus three, 13, plus six, 19, plus 10, 29, plus five, 34, plus 943 plus 750 so I'm expected to get 50 as the answer and I'm getting 50 as the answer so why one portion is done we have the right answer now let's uh, decipher this code here why these three loops or why are the loops uh, here in order to understand that let's simply go ahead and write down first of all what are the valid sub arrays so I would have a sub array of length 1 of uh, this also is a valid sub array length 2 involving 1 length 3 and length 4. Now let's see 2 length 1, 2 3 length 2, 2 3 4 length 3. Okay. So here 3, 3 4 and that's it and what am I left with now I'm only left with four okay so these are all my valid sub arrays what I need to do is I need to go from one including one to a length of one to two to three to four and then I need to start off from the second element two with a length of two to three then I need to start from here 3, 3, 4 and then I need to start from 4 forwards. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I need. What I need to do is I need to change the length every time. I need to change the element that I am starting for every time. Right, and then I need to do the sum. So there are these three things that I need to perform. So that is why I have three loops. This loop here helps me change this element. So when I have 0, I'm starting from A0, which is the first element in my array. Uh, J equals I, J is less than equal to L. This helps me control the group size. We'll come to it. And this helps me sum it. Okay, so let's uh, do a dry run of this code. I takes a value 0. 0, of course, is less than n which is 4 so let's say n is 4 and here when I come to this portion here because uh, this condition is satisfied 0 is less than equal to 4 so what do I do I come to k k is getting initialized to 0 0 is not less than 0 so I skip this up why this is the empty array then j increases becomes 1 k gets the value of i which is 0, 0 is less than 1. So I end up adding total plus equals a of k which has been initialized to 0, total of a0. This means this thing here, 1, adding 1 to my total. Okay, what happens next? k increases, it increases from its old value which was 0 to 1. Now 1 is not less than 1, so what do I do? Go to the outer loop j will increase to 2 now. What do I do next? What I do next is I go ahead 
and initialize k to 0 again remember the outermost loop is uh, i so k initialized to 0 again 0 is less than 2 so what do i do now what i do now at this moment is i go ahead and i enter total plus equals a of 0 again right okay what do i do next what i do next is i will increment k it becomes 1 1 is less than 2 so i will have something like this written remember this is the sum here okay what happens next what happens next is uh, k increments 2 is not less than 2 i go back to j j also increments it becomes 3 now at this point if i had not written equal to 3 i would have missed this because 3 would not have been 3 so i would have never uh, or rather i would not have missed it i would have still done this but when j would have become 4 i would have missed this entire sub -end. so with 3 going by the same way i will be going ahead and taking these elements a0 a1 as well as a2 right okay what would happen at this point j would increase 4 is less than equal to 4 remember if i did not put this uh, equal to i would just end up with this array and i would never go to this array with length 4 i would end up putting a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus a3 at this point this loop will also become false and i would get the value of i as 1 now remember i need to start with 1 here which is 2 so the first thing that i do is j gets initialized to 1 right remember i is 1 array index a1 is equal to 2 so i go into k k is 1 1 is not less than 1 so j increments it becomes 2 1 is less than 2 so i would go ahead and i would begin adding this and this and this proceeding in this manner i'm going to end up with a total here in this total variable so i will simply go ahead and now i would be able to print out my total on the screen so this is uh, the requirement of these three loops the innermost loop helps me add everything the second innermost or the intermediate innermost loop the loop control variable j helps me control this number of elements which i need to add and the outermost loop helps me cycle or move through these elements okay going be by this manner i told you that this is going to be a very compute intensive or a computation expensive code right so computation expensive code uh, what do you mean by computation expensive code it carries a lot of computations right uh, look at what has happened i had to go from 0 to n remember four times this code would have also run four times and this will ultimately end up running four times so if the length of the array is four i end up running four into four into four these many number of times now imagine what happens if my array was 10 elements long if it was 10 elements long i would have gone ahead and ran this thousand times if it was 100 i would be 100 into 100 into 100 right thereby making my computation slow in terms of time complexity i would simply say the time complexity of this code is big o of n cube i'm going to use the symbol to denote uh, raised to the power right so time complexity of this code is very much but yes it is simple to formulate it is simple to come up with and of course as all brute force solutions are this is very accurate right so we will end our session with this uh, discussion here we will come back when we come back in our second session we are going to analyze look at another approach which is going to be more effective as compared to this one so thank you for joining this session guys thank you for uh, watching this session you have a good day here bye take care